Thanks. Yeah, we, we don't tend to look at those macro risks, we look at the risks within real estate. And I think um, Stefan and Will have, have alluded to those and, and in terms of the two big risks around, one is the fundamental, so in the, sp the space market, demand and supply, and the other is on the capital markets. And those are the two big risks for real estate. And I think there are, um, there are big, big risks uh, on both sides. And, and one thing I think we shouldn't forget is the fickleness of both capital and the fickleness of supply. So a lot of people say, oh, there's not much supply, it's maybe in London. But what's happening in some markets that are suffering now globally, so the, the classic markets that are suffering are the commodity markets, Calgary, Houston, Perth. They're really in a chronic position, partly because demand, but it's all the sublease space. You remember that from back in 2007, 2008? That comes back to, to hit people when the economy goes down, then there's a huge amount of space that comes back on the market. So there might not be much physical supply. So I think people are, are, are thinking about uh, watching for the, that supply. Um, but the, probably the, the bigger risk is on the capital side. And I think we're at this fascinating stage of this cycle, at different stages of the innings, as Will says. But, and, and I think, Stefan, that chart was fantastic. That chart, we, that's sort of the main point there, that um, expected returns are generally lower than target returns. And that's where we're at, fundamentally. Um, because we're at the late stage in terms of the capital cycle, Yields have been pushed down, and rents aren't, aren't picking up enough to compensate for that. Uh, and so the big questions there are interest rates rising, and, and when and what impact that will be, and, and how, is that a, a one-year or five-year process, or longer, as, 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 as Marcus was maybe suggesting. Um, so I think it's, it's both on those two sides that people seem to be watching. And, and I, I think, again, as Will said, these markets are at very different stages, so watching how the UK moves through, is it a soft landing or hard landing? Because clearly, the rest of Europe is at a different stage of the cycle. That could be a quite a good indicator of where other markets might be going. If we think back to 9-11 and that event, that had a huge economic impact, and, and, and that then caused huge problems uh, economically, and, and that, that, that shock uh, had huge economic impacts on demand and, and, and caused the recession and then had massive implications, uh, longer term implications. But also on the, on the capital side, so what shocks could they have to the capital market? So we're this very fragile state now with these, these very low bond yields, these, these unprecedented interventions. And what could that, and that could be perverse, it could persist in terms of low bond yields, it could persist in terms of government intervention. But I think those are, the, those are the two dimensions we need to think of, and then the transmission into, into those two sides. It, it depends on the nature of the, the shock, I think. Um, and maybe to add to this, uh, on the way to London yesterday, I was reading the Financial Times on the plane. There was um, Joe Kayser, as CEO of, of Siemens, uh, one of the you know, large global players in Germany, kind of warning that you know, um, you know, further events like what happened in Paris, of course, you know, even have the large corporation thinking about, you know, investing in, in new markets, expanding and so forth. So definitely could have an impact on, you know, rather the commercial or maybe office side, I think. And other than that, in any kind of crisis or shock, you know, people are looking for, you know, safe havens, fly to quality. So I think overall real estate, uh, you know, depending on the sector and the areas is in, in some areas a uh, safe haven. Um, if you look at a particular parts, so you know, I think um, that's the kind of potential impact I see. I, only that um, you know, I used to run a, a reasonably big platform in Europe, and uh, it was great to have the input of, of uh, the research team. But you have to kind of look beyond some of the bumps in the road, and I hate to refer to some of the shocks we've had recently like that, but. If you don't look beyond them, you don't. You could, you would sit there like a sort of frightened rabbit and never do anything. So you have to look at the sort of bigger cycle. Um, and the, the world, whatever's happened in the world over the years, it has been a cycle, and that cycle is relatively predictable. And and as long as you kind of choose your risk category at the right time of the cycle, and that's you know there's a lot of uh, art in that, then um, it shouldn't stop you investing. But I agree that. And if I think back to 2012, some of the issues, 13, there is always something you could, you could blame or use to stop you doing anything. And I think now is 
no different from that. We're later in the cycle, you've got to look at it in a different way. And you know, some of the, the, the horrible things that happened in Paris, some of that risk has got closer to the heart of Europe. So you, again, you've got to think about it slightly differently. But um, you know, if, if you sat and looked at every single risk, you would never do anything. And you know, the best investors, certainly the best managers and some of the best global investors in the world are playing a lot longer game than that. Uh, well, sorry, either a lot shorter specific game than that for the managers or a lot longer game than that uh, as the long-term global investors. So it shouldn't necessarily stop you as long as you've got the right information. These guys you know, do a good job of providing it. Thank you. Good. So I guess the long-term message is look in long term. That's overcome this shorter... Yeah. Look, most of the capital in the world ultimately is long term. Some parts of our industry use it in a short term way. So there's some very, very good value add managers and opportunistic managers in the world at the moment. And they're taking capital that ultimately is long term capital, but using it in a short term way to sort of spike the returns for those long term investors. So uh, you, know, you, sh you shouldn't be afraid by, I, I just remember sitting there time and time and time again in board meetings thinking, God, should we do this? Because look at all the risks ahead of us. And then you know, we went through um, various bumps. You know, everybody thought Brexit, here we go, certainty, 18 months ago. And that's kind of quite a long way down the list now. Um, so it, just, it shouldn't make you freeze. But just make, you know, use all the information. You make your decisions as wisely as you can. Not everybody's, you know, that good at that. And that's what makes a market.